Um, hi, Andy. How are you? Hope you're keeping well. I'm good today, um, thanks. Andy, obviously, with the um, the rising numbers in cases, in COVID cases, I suppose we saw the Republic of Ireland last week, the challenges they had to deal with. Um, how would you describe the challenges for, for you and your squad now over the next few weeks? Well, they are what they are. I suppose we are pretty lucky that um, um, our boys have been in a similar type of process uh, at the clubs for, for some time now. So the they're used to living with the virus and trying to cope with it and, and obviously do the right thing by it, etc. So uh, we've got protocols in place and uh, we need to make sure that we adhere to that. And uh, we, uh, we're certainly doing that at this moment in time and we, we plan to continue it because we need to make sure that we, um, we, uh, we get off the ground, don't we, against Italy and get the, get the game played and obviously move on to finishing the Six Nations against France. Is it frustrating to lose uh, um, Ian Henderson to that suspension? Oh, well, you know, it, it is what it is. And, and these things happen in sport, just like injury. You know, you, you, you've you got to play the, the cards that you dealt with. And, uh, you know, Ian's obviously not happy about it. And he, he would rather be available to play, etc. But it's somebody else's opportunity. And uh, we'll look forward to that. Hi Andy, how are things? Um, had a few injuries obviously going into the squad. How are at the likes of Andrew Porter, Johnny Sexton, are they shaping up okay for the Italy game? Uh, obviously, they're, 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 they've got a few protocols to, to come through, uh, but they're, they're, they're looking they're looking good. Uh, they, they train with a low key session uh, yesterday um, and got through that absolutely fine. Uh, we've got a decent old session uh, tomorrow that will that will. Um, We'll see how they go with that, but at this moment in time, they're progressing very well. Uh, sorry, Andy, I don't know if you got that there. Just wondering in terms of Shane Daly and Hugo Keenan, they've come through a similar pathway in terms of sevens, Will Connors as well. Uh, what have you made of them, their progress, and what will they bring to the squad? Um, they'll bring a lot to the squad, actually. Uh, um, uh, an energy, an energy that's uh, that's relentless, really. The, all three of them that you mentioned there have got fantastic attitudes and... Uh, it's what's needed, isn't it, to uh, to grow on the international ladder? They're obviously um, done unbelievably well to, to to get selected, but this is the start of their international career. They are very hungry for information, etc., and and uh, their attitude has been uh, uh, first class. It's a difficult world, you know, coming into uh, an international camp for the first time. The, you're obviously behind the eight ball because there's a lot of people that's uh, been around for, for for quite some time who actually know the setup and. And how to get yourself ready for an international match in in a few de, in a few days? It's pro obviously new to them, but they're adapting unbelievably well, and the lads are looking after them along the way. Um, yeah, the the potential's there for everyone to see, and uh, we've got to make sure that we bring that out. Thank you, Neil Tracy. Hi, Andy. Um, obviously. A while back, we would have thought that the, the ranking was going to be huge for the World Cup draw coming up in uh, December, but obviously that's been decided now and are going to be third seeds. Has that affected maybe the way you're going to be selecting teams? Are you going to be a bit more inclined to give players a chance when there isn't going to be as big an influence on the rankings? Um, I didn't quite, I think I didn't quite hear the whole thing, but I know it was on the on the world rankings. I thought it was Darth Vader that was asking me the question then for a second, but anyway. Um, listen, as far as the world rank is concerned, it is what it is, you know, there's no, there's no point um, thinking that you're unlucky in this type of situation that we're in. There's a decision that has to be made and it's been made and we we, we get on with it, you know. Um, you know, I've been, in, been involved in a few World Cups now and, uh, you know, World Cups are there to be won by, by, by beating everyone. So we've got to make sure that we're at our best and able to do that. And will it affect the team selection? Are you going to be more inclined to give players a chance? Well, there's all sorts of things that affect uh, team selection. And for example, you know, uh, the, the injuries that we've got in the squad at the moment, as I said to you before, it's a great opportunity. And sometimes it's an opportunity for things that you wouldn't probably have changed before, different combinations, etc. So that's the type of opportunity that um, that the the um, the period that we've got in front of us may arise, you know. So we'll we'll obviously assess every single camp and every single game uh, as we go, and uh, and selection uh, has got to be right. What's what's right for the team at that moment in time? Andy, how's it going? Uh, Pat McCarry here. 
Um, just just about in terms of like, let's say go back. It seems like a lifetime ago, but go back to um, before the Italy game earlier on this year, and John Cooney looked like he was set to to maybe start that game, or he was the kind of front runner to start that game. But he's out of the picture and out of the squad entirely now. Is it something in his game that you want to see improvements in, or is it just a new direction that you're going in? Uh, no, I, w- I wouldn't say it's a, it's a new direction. That you know, I think um, I think John Cooney is a is a, a great player. You know, it's, I think that. Luke McGrath's a, a great player as well, and, and, and Luke's missed out. And uh, you know, I, I don't gain any pleasure whatsoever from not picking lads. You know, um, I know that they're desperate to play for the country, and, and, and rightfully so. And uh, you know, but you've got to make a call, haven't you? What's good for the team? And uh, you look at all sorts of things regarding selection. Obviously, form, attitude, uh, what the last seven months has, has, has looked like, how they've come back, etc. And you know, my job is to make sure that I, I, I uh, obviously select a team that's going to keep everyone on the toes, etc. And, and, and because um, competition for places has got to be one of the key factors going forward for this team. And you know, some people are going to lose out, but I hope that galvanises them, and I hope that they come back bigger and stronger and give us a few headaches along the way. And would you hope that the, the process that happened at the Aviva Stadium with the provinces and, and how well that went, that maybe if it comes to a level five decision and elite sports kind of getting the go ahead, would you hope that maybe the IRFU and the government might be able to work something out and keep these games going? Well, obviously, I, I'd love to play the games. I'd love to get the, the Six Nations finish and play in the Autumn Nations Cup. You know, we, uh, we've we waited a long time for international rugby to come back and I, I suppose it's a nice tonic for, for the whole country to be able to, to, to watch the sport at international level come back on, on the screens and we're desperate to, to, um, to uh, uh, put a good show in for, for the people of Ireland. But as I said before, there's, uh, there's bigger things than rugby, isn't there? So we'll just be advised and do the right thing by, by, by the country and what, and what the government wants us to do. Thanks, Andy. OK, well, let's take the last couple in this section, lads and ladies. Uh, hi Andy, it's Sean here. Um, it's a bit of a broad question, but you know it's been such a long period of time since you've last you've last been with the players. What have you learned over the last couple of months, and what are you hoping to achieve over the next week? Um, I've learned how to uh, do calls on, on on Teams quite a bit and and Zoom etc. And uh, yeah, we've managed to keep ourselves busy to trying to improve uh, improve our game um, with the coaching staff and the, and, and the players etc. Look, there's been a long time for, for, for thinking, you know. Um, uh, there's, you know, the, the, there is a little bit of a, an evolution that, that needs to happen within, within our game, you know. Uh, you know, I, I think one of our strengths, one of our strengths is, um, is sticking to the plan. Also, one of our, one of our work-ons would be um, being adaptable in and around that plan. Um, for our boys to to see the whole picture, and I'm not just talking about the generals of the team. I'm I'm, I'm talking about everyone now to um, play with a vision, you know, play with an appetite to see things, play with a play with an appetite to 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 be able to make good decisions and be able to play and execute on those decisions is something that that we've started. It may be a, a long enough whole process, but it's something that I'm willing to stick to. Sorry, is that a case of just empowering the players a bit more on the pitch to make, well, to make those I mean, decisions on the fly? Yeah, to just to, to just say that you're empowering. Obviously, you're trying to educate them on 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 the uh, on the decisions regarding the different scenarios that they're looking for. You know, first first process has got to be to look for them. You know, the second second uh, process has got to be how to uh, how to execute and back up that that that, that vision. Okay, guys, we're going to switch into the embargoed written word section now. Okay, um, so if uh, if you're not involved in this, you can you can drop off, and we'll focus in on those guys. Thank you. <laughs> 